You know what? I'm in the mood for making a glassine type of button. You see them on websites all the time. They're kind of cool. There are a lot of ways to make them. But since we're in layer styles, we're going to make one exclusively using layer styles. So open up in your exercise files, round glass button right here. Now, right now, there's not much in it. We will be using this file in the next lesson. So it's important when we get done, because there's a lot of work to do here, that you save it. But if you don't save it, I have the actual final result right here in this group. And you can see that's what we're going to do. Now, with that said, let's turn that off and get started. Create a new layer. Let's go ahead and come up here and name the layer Button Base, or whatever you want to name it, I suppose. That's where our base is going to go. Come over here to this button, and you've got all these different things going on in here. Pick up the rounded rectangle tool right there. Up here, a couple of things to remember. Change this to pixels if it isn't on pixels. And change the radius right here to 30 pixels. That'll give a rounded edge to this thing when we draw it. Inside the layer button base, come over here and draw. Now the color you choose is not important. I've got a brown down here. That's fine. It really doesn't matter the color. So we're going to draw ourselves a rounded button. Kind of like that. There you go. There's our start. Now we're going to be using four, count them, four separate layer styles to make this thing happen. So let's get started by going into our FX button right here and going down to the first one, drop shadow. There's a standard drop shadow, but we got to make some changes here. Go to the color right here. In the color, change these numbers in R, G, and B to 70. And press the tab key. 20. And 80. Now what you've got is a deep purple. The reason I'm using that color, deeper representation of the color that's out here. So that would be something you would need to know to make this look good is the color the button is going against. Go ahead and click OK. We're going to change the opacity down just a little. Change it to 70 instead of 75. And we need to change our distance to 15. Our spread to, let's go, about 25 and 25 on size. If your angle is not at 125, go ahead and put it at 125. But that's default. That should be all right. We want global light. Everything else we leave alone. Now the next one we do, see the cool thing is we don't have to get out of here, click OK. We got everything over here. The next thing is a gradient overlay. So go into gradient overlay. Incidentally, if you click here, basically what you get is a gradient overlay, but you don't get the controls. If you click on the name gradient overlay, it adds it, but it also gives you the control. A couple of things we want to do here. But we're going to make our own gradient. Ever make one before? It's pretty easy. Come over here. Don't click here. Click here. Click right on that gradient. Down here, we have what I call crayons, but they're not really crayons. They're little sliders. Top one is for opacity of the color, and the bottom one is for the color itself. So go to the bottom left one. The color will be whatever it is, probably black. But I want you to change that if it isn't white. So you're going to go in here and click right in that black. You're going to take and slide all the way up to the upper left. That'll give you a pure white, just like that. Click OK. Now on this one over here, if the color is not white, mine is, but if yours isn't white, then you want to click here again and do the same thing. You want white on both sides. But now go to the top right crayon slider, change the opacity to zero. Now you can see your other color coming through. Doesn't matter what it is, but it'll come through because we now have transparency on one side and we have a full white on the other. Let's save this just in case we want it again. So give it a name, whatever you want to call it, my color. Click new. Just in case you want to use it again, it'll be there. Click OK now. Let's go ahead and reverse it to put the light on the top. That is our second layer stop. Third one, go into Inner Glow, right here. 
Now the first thing we need to do is change the blending mode to multiply. That's kind of like the opposite of screen. Let's go ahead and change the opacity to about 40%. Default 75. Let's change the size down here to 40. And we need to change the color right here. Click that button to our three numbers, 70, 20, 80. So 70, 20, and 80. And you can see it's beginning to look a little bit more rounded, like a rounded glassy button. Click OK. Next and last, Inner Shadow. So go to Inner Shadow right here. Go ahead and click it there so we get it. We need to change the color right here to our classic 70, 20, 80. But this one I want a little bit lighter. So there's that little circle telling me where it is. I'm going to click and drag it straight up just a little bit. Now you can see what it was and what it is now. So I just lightened it up actually just a little bit. Click OK. Now for distance, choke, and size, get into distance. Change that to 15. Change the choke to about 5. And change the size to 30. Okay. Now we've got all of our pieces together right now. Go ahead and click OK. Take the fill all the way down. And it starts looking more like it's a glassing button. But we have one more piece, the icing on the cake, if you will. Let's create one more new layer above this one. In that layer, I want you to choose white as your painting color. Now I've got white on the back side here, so I can just simply click that little arrow right there. See the little arrow? So I can click that button and get to the reverse, or I could choose a foreground color from up here if I wanted to. White is what we want, so let me go ahead and do that again. Pick up your rounded rectangle tool and in the new layer let's actually name that highlight i like to name the layers because it helps you know what they are okay with the highlight layer selected with our little rounded rectangle selected with the same settings we used to draw this i want you to draw one right up here draw it right out like that nice little thin thing something like that and let go if it's not quite centered, we might want to pick up our Move tool and use our arrow keys, get it somewhere about like that. Last step, go up to the word Filter on the pull-down menu and go down to Blur, Gaussian Blur. And you want to give it about a 5 or a 6. Actually, something like that looks fine, and that's a 6. Click OK. There you go. Couple of steps. Nothing basically but layer styles and actually one more layer with our highlight, then you have what kind of looks like a glassing button. Let's do one more thing. Let's go ahead and go and select the final group. Don't open it, just select it, and then click New. So now we have a layer underneath these two. Come over here and pick up your Type tool. Let's go ahead and click this button right here, which defaults the colors back to black and white. I want to type in black. Click here somewhere and, I don't know, type in the word Home. And I need to make that a little bit smaller, I do think, but not a lot. Let's see what that does for us. We go ahead and click here. It looks like it's part of the button. Now that I see it that way, though, I think what I'm going to do is go to Highlight and lower the opacity just a little bit so it's not quite so intense. Well, there you go. But don't forget to save this. But if you forget, don't forget, we do have the one we're going to need for the next lesson right here in the final group. On to the next.